seven wrong assumptions the narcissist makes about you. Narcissists have an exaggerated sense of omnipotence, where they believe that they have great power and influence, as though they can do or accomplish absolutely anything, especially things that defy logic, things that go against conscious reasoning that would otherwise be conducted and assessed according to principles of validity, reason and good judgment which would then ground them in reality. But because they believe that they have unlimited power and they are the ultimate authority, it gives them a psychological blind point. A persistent lack of insight and awareness considering certain aspects of their target's personality and behavior. which causes them to be out of touch with what is actually happening because they're always fault finding they're very disapproving of anything that you say or do and they display an overly critical point of view where they don't even think before they speak or act when this is a basic concept that is typically instilled in a toddler and yet it's something that narcissists can't seem to grasp, achieve or understand. Which is why a lot of their thoughts and concepts do not align or correspond with what is actually truthful or factual. They're just going off of what they feel because in their minds their feelings are facts. But this way of thinking and feeling is what leads them to proceed along a course of action and behaviour that ultimately leads them to danger, difficulty and failure. And it's something that they cannot reverse or change. Because they have to see themselves in this way. It's the only way that they can function. They have to see themselves as being all powerful and all knowing. Because deep down they're actually very insecure. They don't really believe in the things that they say. And you will notice this. If you press them on their ideologies and you try to get them to expand, they won't even be able to give you a logical explanation for why they think in the way that they do. All you'll get from them is false truths, world salad and gaslighting. Because when it comes down to actually having a genuine conversation about it, they haven't got a leg to stand on. They wouldn't know where to start. Because these are just ideas, fantasies and illusions that they have created in their minds. And it's to compensate for their insecurities and deficiencies. Which is why they will make a lot of wrong assumptions. So here are seven wrong assumptions that the narcissist makes about you. One, they underestimate you. They estimate you to be less important than you really are. Because they underestimate your intelligence, power, capabilities and emotional strength. So at times they don't even entertain the possibility that your opinions and judgments are actually pretty accurate. And they overlook your ability to deal with challenges and bounce back from them. Because they've already managed to trick and deceive you. So they assume that they're greater than you. They see it as though they're the ones who are in control. They're steering the ship. So they can't even acknowledge the fact that as an empath, you're naturally positive in attitude. You're full of energy and you have new ideas. They can't even see it. Because if they were to do that, it would take away their position of being in control and of them being superior to you. So it really doesn't matter to them how wonderful of a person you might be. Because they're too preoccupied with ignoring you and treating you as unimportant. Instead of challenging your power and intelligence. But by choosing to go at it in that way they're actually making a big mistake. Because they're just overlooking you. They're not fully understanding your capabilities. They're underestimating your power. So they're making a highly inaccurate assessment of you. 
they're not seeing that you can actually be a very valuable asset to them which ultimately ends up backfiring on them it has the opposite and undesirable effect of what they intended because while you're giving them all of your love and attention they just see you as being weak and ineffective as though you can't survive without them but you're not displaying weakness you're displaying strength because it takes strength to be vulnerable and to have patience so they're completely misidentifying you while you're overlooking their faults and their failure to meet a certain standard but they see that as a weakness as though it's you who needs them because you're tolerating them when maybe at times we can be naive and maybe a little bit foolish because we think that we can see some potential in them so we're trying to help them and we're continuing in this course of action in the face of difficulty even with little or no indication of success because we're trying to correct it and we're trying to make things better for them when in fact there is no possible way to make it right but when you're making an effort to please and satisfy them they're just seeing it as a weakness as though you can't live without them because they're very arrogant and delusional which is why they're so shocked when you leave them because they thought they had you wrapped around their finger they thought they had complete control over you so they assumed that you weren't going anywhere two they believe that their flying monkeys can save them the flying monkeys typically have personality disorders or mental illnesses of their own and yet these are the people who the narcissist picks to do their bidding on their behalf because the narcissist is hoping that their flying monkeys are going to reverse the trend of events and then you're going to submit under pressure and return to the narcissist because that's all these people really want they want you to return to your abuser because they see it as though the narcissist owns you and that's it for life as though you are the narcissist's possession because by nature narcissists cause certain situations to happen that are almost always the cause of anything that goes wrong because they provoke people they incite people to do or feel something by arousing anger in them because that is how they get their narcissistic supply which is why they need to have people at their beck and call people who will validate their side and battle and crusade for them while they're making no effort and they're just observing the events and information as they gradually developed or as they are revealed when it all began with lies anyway so the flying monkeys are nothing but fools which is why they tend to be miserably inadequate and of an even lower level than a narcissist because they're just people with inflated egos who attempt to get and do attention for themselves they lack the mental capacity to know that they are being used they can't see that they actually have no identity of their own and that they're just latching onto the narcissist's ideas to be popular or that they're behaving in their own self-interest rather than adhering to set beliefs or morals so they're equally as delusional because they just get off on obeying the narcissist while believing that they are worthy and significant because they have attached their sense of self to carrying out the narcissist's commands or instructions but they're actually only caught up in it because they're insecure or because they have a personality disorder or mental illness which is why they tend to throw a temper tantrum at like a two-year-old child when things don't go their way three they assume that you will always be under their spell they think they're highly skilled in their lies and manipulations as though they're always saying or doing the right thing at the right time 
but they're working secretly using a false appearance in order to get information. So they assume that you will never figure out what's really going on. But they're often very careless. Because they're dealing with so many other issues at the same time. Which often impacts and conflicts with the effect and the position that they're trying to have over you. So you may often see what's going on. And you may direct your gaze or attention towards it. Or say something to make them aware of a fact or circumstance. But because they're so overconfident about their situation, they're assuming that you still don't have knowledge or that you're not suspicious. As though you're not aware of their actions, behaviours or intentions. And it's not going to affect you to the point where you're going to get tired and see through it. They're often unaware of it. Which is why they just continue in the same way as before. Even if you've already called them out in it, they will still continue to defend something that you already know is wrong. Because that's often the only thing they have to support their point of view, but it really just reveals how mentally deranged they are when they're still trying to defend something, when you already have facts against it. But they assume that it's working as long as you're still staying. Because they have incorrectly defined the meaning of love and acceptance. So they see it as though you're still a participant in their game. As though they have you wrapped around their finger. Because in their minds they're telling themselves that they're very attractive. So they're projecting their confidence. Because they believe that they have the ability to be in control of any situation. In their minds they think they're this wonderful person. As though you can't do any better. Because you can't get away from them. So they're thinking they're the best thing since sliced bread. And that's what they're depending on. That's why they're expecting it to keep working. Because you can't do or have anything better than them. When that's not even true. Because they have no inner value or substance. So there's nothing worth you sticking around for. Because it's just a fabricated character. They're just mirroring your interests or ideals. Or it's just something that they've made up in their minds. Four. They assume that people are unaware of their dishonest activity. They think that people don't know what they're really about. Or what they're really like. But unknowingly to you, a lot of times people already know. They see through the facade and they don't want to get involved in it. Or in the case of the flying monkeys. They just don't care and they prefer to keep the focus on you. Because that's out of their scope and out of their range of power. So they've got to work within their means of within what's available to them. They're delusional but at the same time they know their place. But the people who really witness their trickery are the people who are closest to them. Outside of that, they're able to maintain fake and superficial relationships and acquaintances, but they keep them at arm's length. They distance themselves emotionally so that all those people see is the facade, which is why it's only the people who live with them or deal with them every day who really know them. So they're wise enough not to get too involved or not to call them out on certain behaviours. But the narcissist is convinced that people aren't on to them. They think they're so on top of things and in control of any given situation that they can get away with anything and no one will ever unravel their motives when it's just their arrogance. Because that is what causes them to engage in risky and extreme behaviour when all it really does is reveal their character. It just shows everyone who they really are. Which is why if you give them enough rope they will hang themselves. They will end up exposing themselves. Five. They assume that they can replace you. Narcissists are very arrogant. In their minds they are superior. 
So once you submit to their demands and you agree to do what they want, they believe that they have complete control over you. So they can focus their attention somewhere else because they can have you whenever they want. They believe that everything you're doing is because of them. So in their minds they created you. Which means that they can do whatever they want whenever they want to do it to you. They can have you back if they want to have you back. Because they're completely delusional. They believe that your behavior can be influenced by their thoughts. So they hold a set of belief for two unrelated events. Because they believe that they can always keep you around them. When the reality is that you always have multiple options available to you. Things that do not involve them. But because of their arrogance and entitlement. They often won't even see it. Six. They assume that you will never recover from the abuse. If you're dealing with a malignant narcissist. They will torment and persecute you. Through a repeated inflicting of suffering and annoyance. To drain you mentally and emotionally. To the point where they believe that you will never be able to move on. And you will always be attainable and within their reach. Because now you can't do without them. So they assume that you're never going to experience a healthy relationship with anyone. But when you do it makes them really angry. Because they don't want anyone to be better than them. They don't want anyone to replace their sexual favours. Or anything else that they've done for you. But they assume that it's never going to happen. That you're never going to be able to move on. Which is why they feel as though they can come back whenever they want. Because they believe that you will always be an available option to them. Seven. They believe that they should still be a part of your life. They believe that they should still have access to you. Because in their minds they've done nothing wrong. You're to blame for everything. But deep down they already know what they've done. They know why you don't want to be with them. They know what they did which made you not want to be with them. They're just in denial. Because they don't want to accept their faults or wrongdoings. The narcissist may assume certain things about you. They may accept things to be true without question or proof. So that it makes them feel like they have some level of power over you. But regardless of what they assume. It never works out the way that they want it to. It doesn't impact reality. And instead it just ends up being the cause of their descent in the end. Because they're completely delusional. And they're not even concerned with what you're thinking or feeling. They don't even know because they lack empathy. All they can really do is read into your weaknesses and vulnerabilities. But even then, it's typically just a response to what they're doing to you. So that really has nothing to do with you. But other than these negative qualities that they assign to you. If you don't relate or associate with it. As far as they're concerned you're unreachable. For all they know you're in another reality. Because they're of a lower consciousness. They can't read into that. So it does nothing for them. They can only relate to you by bringing you down. Which means that they can't even see anything from your perspective. Because they can't attain that level of vibration. Which ultimately leads to their loss of power over you. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Share your thoughts in the comment section. 
hit the subscribe button to receive the notifications if you would like to support the channel you can donate to paypal.me slash narc survivor you can book a one-on-one -on -one with me on my website it's narc survivor the cut uk thank you for watching and i'll talk to you soon